In Season of Discovery, every class is a three-part rune quest, which requires turn-ins that total roughly 60 gold. This involves starting in Ratchet within the Barrens and talking to Grisby in the inn. He will have you gather materials in the open world, utilize professions of various kinds, as well as farm materials for low drop rate items. I'm going to break down the cost of each quest because each of these items can be purchased through trade or the auction house, as well as where to farm them. This is creating a market opportunity to farm and craft these materials as well to sell them. A lot of people don't feel like going through the wowhead notes and sifting through all the information, so here's how. The first quest is called Fish Oil. If you're Alliance, you will encounter these while farming murlocs in wetlands off Bluegill Raiders and Oracles south of Menethil Harbor. There were several horde farming in this location as well. There's two spots for these, and I personally farm the location south of Menethil due to the hyperspawns and mob density, although the location north has a little bit lower level murlocs. There may be a lot of people here, and if you're not ranged, you may have difficulty soloing them because they're orange to you. Horde can obtain them in wetlands, as well as Hillsbrad near South Shore. There are a lot of murlocs there to the east and west along the southern coast. I haven't played Horde yet, so I'm not sure if this is where they're actually farming them, but I did notice a lot of Horde in wetlands. You should bring a friend with you and farm twice as fast if possible. I was able to do this in under an hour as a duo, and we both farmed an iridescent pearl. Speaking of pearls, you can farm iridescent pearls off these murlocs, which are used in the crafting of tailoring spider silk pre-raid bis, BOE boots, as well as the BOE blacksmithing shining silver breastplate chest. These boots can later be used to upgrade with the epic BFD raid crafting recipe, as well as the chest can be upgraded with the epic BFD raid crafting recipe. Iridescent pearls are going for upwards of six gold at the timing of this video, and they have a 3% drop rate from the big mouth and thick shelled clams found off these murlocs. The second quest is called Dark Iron Ordinance, which requires farming ogres in North Wetlands for 20 Dark Iron Ordinances. It is very hard and not recommended to solo these, as it's believed that group loot doesn't affect the drop rate here, meaning if you group up, you will all still get the same amount of these to drop and not be penalized for grouping up. There have been reports of people being able to loot the same mob as well as being able to do it in raids as well. And these are each selling for roughly one to two gold on the auction house right now. The third quest is called Shredded Turbochargers, and it is the most costly and lengthy of the three quests mentioned so far. It requires the use of at least 16 crafted engineering items from a schematic which is dropped in the dead mines with a 0.09% drop rate. To learn it, you must obtain the schematic from Sneed and have 135 NG. After learning it, you can create shredder auto salvage units which are used to obtain the final item which you will need to turn in for the quest these are each going for one gold each at the at the time of recording this video and to make these they require obtaining one bronze framework two whirling bronze gizmos and one heavy leather the bronze frameworks are crafted by engineers and they require two bronze bars, one medium leather, and one wool cloth. The whir whirling bronze gizmos require two bronze bars and one wool cloth. The heavy leather is obtainable as low as level 25 in Shadowfang Keep from some bosses, but if you want to do this more reliably, you can do it in wetlands, duskwood, and thousand needles. After you've crafted one, you Use them on Venture Lightco Shredders as a one-time use to obtain the Shredded Turbocharger, which is required for the quest. Now, of all the data sets I've seen, people mention between a 50 and 
between a 50 to 60 percent success rate for using these so if we go by the data sets you'll likely need to craft a minimum of around 32 to finish the quest which translates to about 32 gold in auction house sales or purchases at one gold apiece so the actual shredders are selling for f about five gold too which so you could make a profit there if you're considering doing that you could go out to the shredders use one and if you get um, an actual shredded tur shredder turbocharger you could sell it for five gold after only spending one gold on it all in all if we're going by auction house prices the fish oil quest requires about three to five gold uh, depending on the time of day and server the Dark Iron Ordinance quest requires roughly 10 to 15 gold. The Shredded Turbocharger quest will require roughly 32 gold. This means the entire rune quest chain materials require an upper bound of about 52 gold. And the quest itself costs 5 gold to turn in. So that's going to give us about 57 gold. And we can round that up to 60 just because we were being pretty generous with the amount of shredders you would actually need to complete that quest. So this can either be an opportunity for you to make gold and farm these items, or if you already have a lot of gold because you found a BOE or something, you can just skip all this and buy them off the auction house. As a final word of caution, there have been several people that have mentioned if you turn over if you turn in over the required amount of these when you're going to turn the quest in and ratchet if you have more in your bags they'll just all be turned in so meaning like if you have any extra of these items you're going to lose all of them when you turn the quest in so either bank them or put them yeah put them in your bank or in an alt Either way, I hope this video was informative and helped you understand what's required to finish this rune quest chain. I appreciate you all watching until the end, and please feel free to like and subscribe, and stay tuned for the next video.